Today we're going to talk about hypothesis testing. Now in general the idea of hypothesis testing is let's say we have a big equation in econometrics and we want to see if some of the explanatory variables in this equation is significant or not. We need a method to test if these variables individually are significant or not. A typical method that we use is the t-test to see if these individual explanatory variables are significant or not. Now in general, if we look at hypothesis testing, we can see there's basically four steps that we take. Um, the first step, as I've indicated here, is we need to set up the null and the alternative hypothesis. Now it's sort of best practice if we set up the hypothesis that the, the outcome that we expect to be the alternative hypothesis. So for example, let's say we expect a positive relationship between the explanatory variable and the dependent variable, typically what we will do is in this case the alternative hypothesis we would say is bigger than zero, meaning there's a positive relationship. Of course the alternative one then will be the coefficient smaller than or equal to zero. Once we have the hypothesis uh, hypothesized signs, which of course is very important from an economic perspective, we can go over to see if this is also significant from a statistical point of view. So the second step that we take is we need to calculate the calculated t value. Now it might seem as if I am repeating myself or being double, but you will see just now why it's important to make a distinction here as to the calculated t value. Of course, this t-value is calculated using the formula that I've given on the board, which in this case will be the estimated coefficient minus what we are testing it against divided by the standard error of your coefficient. Now, in most cases, in this course, we are going to test whether this coefficient is statistically different from zero or not. So, in most, most cases, the second part will just be a zero or will fall away. Once we have the calculated t-value, we need to look up the critical t-value. The critical t-value, of course, you will find in the t-tables, which is in the, the textbook. And uh, the, in this case, what is important there is you will see that they work with degrees of freedom. To get to your degrees of freedom, you use this formula, which is n minus k minus 1, where n is the number of observations, k is the number of explanatory variables, and one just keeps the place of your interceptor. Once you have a value for both of these, we can take our decision. And in general, I'm going to give you your decision rule now. If your calculated t value is bigger than your critical t value, we reject our null hypothesis.